Bonjour. Well, that's impressive. Uh, it's quite amazing to be speaking in such a great venue. This is really, really impressive, and I feel humbled. I'd like to start up with a story. The 23rd September 1999, the NASA probe Mars Climate Orbiter approaches Mars and while entering the atmosphere, unfortunately burns. So that's actually because part of the engineers were speaking in uh, what you could say the actual normal scientific way to speak about metrics, which is the metric system, while the, uh, just a small team was actually speaking in the imperial system, so using inches instead of centimeters. And while passing their results to the rest of the project, the rest of the project did not understand that and they did not transform, transform inches to centimeters. So what that story is telling us is that it's not a math problem, uh, it's not really uh, anybody's fault, I guess, but what, I really, really, what we can learn from it is if you don't speak the same language in the same project, you can end up with really catastrophic results. Uh, I worked at The Guardian for about a year and a half, you probably heard of it, through uh, Edward Snowden stories, GCHQ, all that kind of privacy on the web. And just a quick recap of The Guardian itself. It was founded in the UK in 1821, whereas the dot-com was actually founded in 1999. Uh, the Guardian newspaper is UK only, whereas obviously the website is worldwide. The number of copies distributed is about 180,000, whereas uh, the number of unique browsers counted in, uh, I think, June was 105 million. That's the current Guardian website in the UK, and there's a big problem with that website. It's not ideal to pinch and zoom to read your stories on the web. So we decided to create a responsive website, and it was really enabling to tell stories in a very, very much richer way, like this one, for example, this is an example about the reintroduction of the European bison, bison in Romania. And you can see how rich it is, and we can tell the story to so many different devices, to so many different people as well, um, just with one platform. So all the website is actually open source. You can count uh, around 68, 70 contributors last time I checked. Uh, 30 engineers of these contributors will touch HTML and CSS, and they're not all experts. There's about 25,000 lines of SaaS, and the release cycle is about four times a day to release to production. Here's how it worked. We were in very small units, and what we tried to do is to have different specialties in each team. So typically, we would work starting from an idea, like a problem that the business would, would ask us to solve, and then we would prototype it, and then we would put it in front of users. That's really quick. But we didn't stop there. What we wanted to do, really, is to measure the effect of each change we were making, so we created tools to do that. And so if we get back to where we were, actually, we were iterating on it really, really quickly. So quick recap, uh, we have quite a lot of contributors. I know that compared to some people here, uh, like Google or Twitter or Facebook, this is not a lot, but for us, that was quite a lot. Uh, with different skill sets, people speaking different languages. We, between all uh, specialties in the team, we were not speaking exactly the, with the same lingua. And we release early and often, and we really, really wanted to keep it that way. So lots of developer tools at The Guardian. You can pretty much use whatever tool you want, for the, the, which is the best for the job. But I'm just going to talk a little bit about SAS today, not much. SAS is a CSS preprocessor, and I think there is a really great talk uh, from Hugo later that you really, really want to hear, because, uh, yeah, he's going to talk more about that. Let's talk about colors. So typically, a color in a, in a web project is something you refer to as uh, hexadecimal value, RGB, HSL, but that's not really how humans think about colors. So if a designer tells me, oh, this color on this headline, it should be light gray, and I'm a bit lost as a developer because like, what is light gray? What does that mean? We have eight grays, shade, different shades in our CSS. Which one should I choose? Uh, so what's happening here is that to figure this out, I have to get out of my loop. And instead of being 
constantly iterating and thinking project, 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 I have to be like, hang on, what's the referential? What language are we speaking? Uh, what's the hexadecimal value for light gray? So to make sure we knew exactly what we were all talking about, we created just a very simple list of all the colors we used on the website uh, and so actually on multiple products. And in SAS, here's what we did. You can act, actually, uh, I know that CSS variables were just presented, but in, in SAS, that's something that existed for quite a long time now. And let's say I want to register the brand blue. I just declare it as a normal variable as you would in any programming language, and then I can call it, like, let's say in here, I want the navigation background to be brand blue, and then SAS does the job to translate it to CSS, and here's what I have. Um, to go back to our example, the color of the title is light gray. Actually, in our referential, it was referenced as neutral one. And here, actually, this is more like a dark gray, to be honest. And here is what SAS translates it to. So in my code, I have exactly the same referential as the designer. And because that kind of discussion happens over and over again, we're making great progress on staying in the loop of iteration and just not getting out of our, uh, uh, of our zone to consult, hang on, what's light gray again? So if you take away here, the code is a communication tool. Uh, we put our design system into the code and we can speak the same language uh, with the designers and when we read the code, we know exactly what it is. And also, something I didn't really mention, but you can imagine that if we change that variable, it changes the, br the blue on the whole website, obviously. So no more copy and pasting. Now we did a uh, responsive product, I was saying, and we use breakpoints and media queries, obviously. So we started by using ands as units, and that's how we wrote it. But when I read this media min width 37.5m, uh, I have no idea what that means. Is it tablet? Is it more like phablet? Is it, I don't know. So we created variables for that as well, but that was not really answering all the uh, the problems we were trying to solve. So what we wanted to do is mimic, mimic once again the discussion into the code. So if a designer was telling me I want something to respond like this, starting from tablet, well, from tablet, this is what we can write in CSS as well. Or from tablet to desktop, here's what we would write, exactly what we would have in the dis current discussion. Uh, or maybe I want something to respond only until tablet, and this is what we would write. Now here's what it looks like. We just have something that looks exactly like the discussion we would have into SAS, and then it translates it into machine code. So staying close to real human interaction is what we tried to do, and that enabled us to have a smoother process because this is something that happens over and over and over again in the, in the, in the process, and yeah, just saving so much time. And coding those tools took some time because this is actually an open source project which is called SASMQ and uh, lots of testing around it, but also in the end, it proved to be very productive. So let's talk about the grid. The grid is something that we inherit from the prints to make sure hierarchy of content is, and, and kind of um, the placement of objects is consistent and looks good. The Guardian grid is 4 to 16 60 pixel columns with 20 pixel gutters in between with outer margins of 10 pixel on smaller screens, screens and uh, 20 pixels on bigger screens. Now that's not something that my code is aware of. I have no idea what a gutter is in CSS. What is that? So let's say I'm a designer and I say to the developer, so I'd like that element to be three columns by default and then when you go on desktop, it should be seven column wide. So if I'm a developer, I have to take my calculator, understand, okay, hang on, what's a gutter? What's a column? What's, what's it gonna be when it's uh, three columns? What's it gonna be when it's seven columns? And I have to do the same for the media queries. And this is taking a lot of time. I'm not paid to do maths, really. So we documented the whole grid system and assigned variables and created SAS helpers to help us build components in the way a designer would talk about it. So now, this is what it would look like. The three columns by default, I would write GS span. GS stands for grid system, span on three columns. And then starting on desktop, 
I'd like it to span on seven columns. Now, if the designer changes their mind, uh, which never happens, of course, but let's say they do, uh, they can tell me, okay, actually, let's make it four columns on mobile. Well, that's exactly what I can do. I, I, Really, really quickly, I can interact with the code. I know exactly where it is, what it means. Just change the three into a four, and SAS does the job for me to translate it into actual width and machine code. Now, we didn't stop there because we want to be content first. We treat the, the, the whole layout, the Chrome of, of the website, as an enhancement over the content. And what we wanted to do is create a grid system uh, in synergy with our breakpoints. We didn't want to base our breakpoints on um, device types, which they, they're still called like that for um, uh, understandability purposes. But what we wanted to do is kind of bundle all that together. So our breakpoints are actually a certain number of columns uh, based on the grid. The machines can do math, and they do it really, really well. Uh, so uh, yeah, just don't. Uh, just let the machines do it for you. And the sum of the parts, so here the grid and the media queries, uh, does not equal the whole. So you can actually bundle multiple things together and it makes, makes things even more awesome. Now let's talk about typography. This is a screenshot of the responsive site on a desktop uh, like a few months ago. And this is all the typography settings that you can find on it. Now when I'm a developer, um, I don't know what name the designers use on their software. And when I'm a designer, I don't know what the developers use uh, to name fonts and sizes and all of that and weights. So we, we created a matrix to say, OK, here's our, both our languages. What, how could we speak about a certain uh, type of font in a certain context with the same language? So we reference absolutely everything we could think of, so font weights, font family, the size, the line height, and we created it, we codified it, so we could speak all the same language when having that discussion next really, really close to the code when iterating fast. And a few examples, so here for example, I'd like the header to be a header one. And while SAS is gonna transform that into machine code, it's actually a font size of 16 pixels, a, a, font, a line height of 20 pixels, and as a developer, I don't have to think, hang on, what's that gonna be? I don't have to get out of my cycle uh, that I was showing you earlier, and I can just write down what the designer said. And let's say, again, they change their minds. Well, I can make it a body heading three really, really quickly, and I don't have to rewrite all of the, and to remember, really, uh, all of the settings that this implies. So, let's have a look. This now looks like this. Much simpler to have a conversation over this kind of conventions because header three makes sense to the designer, to the developer. If we want to make a change to iterate on this, just a very small bit of the UI, I can change that in the code instantly. So when no naming convention is in place, like here, we, we had uh, like years of dependencies on, on how designers name their fonts. Uh, we, don't, we can just get together uh, and invent a new one. And speaking the same language not only improved our uh, speed of development, but also UI consistency, because we always have the same settings uh, applied over and over again. And yeah, just made things more consistent and more readable for the users. So what we did really is that instead of going out of our design system for grids, for colors, for typography, well, we put the design system at the center of our whole process. And what that brought really is, as I was saying, consistency, uh, speed, and when you're closer to your designer, you're on the same level. There's no, you don't feel like you have the ownership of the code and they have the ownership of the design. You work together much better. Um, well, in our case, it was really true. And we sat next to each other very, very often, and we could design in browser so, so much faster. So what I want to leave you with is that whether you are at the NASA or not, probably not, uh, I hope that the next time you land your next project, you will be able to speak on the same level with everybody in the project and 
that inches and centimeters become, I don't know, uh, centimeters. <laughs> Thank you.